Plastic pollution is only one of the global challenges we are currently facing. One way to view these challenges is the Planetary Boundaries Framework developed by a team including Johan Rockström, the director of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. This framework presents nine planetary boundaries that represent the limits in which humanity can operate, develop and thrive for generations to come. They include stratospheric ozone depletion, atmospheric aerosol loading, ocean acidification, nitrogen and phosphorus flows to the biosphere and oceans, freshwater consumption and the global hydrological cycle, land system change, loss of biosphere integrity or biodiversity loss and extinction, climate change and chemical pollution and the release of novel entities. As you can see, we have already overshot five planetary boundaries and two are yet to be quantified. Seb edgerson reed from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation had a chance to speak to Johan Rockström at COP26 and asked him to tell us a bit more about his work and the current situation we are facing. Yeah, so the Planetary Boundaries is, a, is an Earth system science approach to try and identify the, the big processes like the climate system, biodiversity, the nitrogen cycle, water cycle, that scientifically we know regulates the state of the planet. And for each of these systems, each of these planetary boundaries, define a scientific target or boundary level within which we get a safe operating space. We have a high likelihood of remaining on a stable, resilient planet, but beyond which we start having risks of crossing tipping points and triggering irreversible changes that would you know, make us drift away from a state of the planet that can really support humanity as we wish. So it's a, it's a guide for sustainability in the Anthropocene. And when you first published this research um, quite some time ago, a couple of those boundaries are being tipped, but more recently, the picture is sort of less promising. Mm. Yes, we published the planetary boundary science the first time in 2009. We already then, then actually uh, concluded that the planetary climate boundary is uh, slightly below 1.5 degrees Celsius, but very close to, to what we, in the end, you know, six years later, agreed in Paris. So we had already, you know, scientific evidence has been around at least for, you know, better part of 10, 15 years that cross, you, you, you come beyond a 1.5 point, we start coming into a danger zone in terms of risks of triggering or crossing tipping points. But the most important, I would argue, with the planetary boundary science is that it shows that we have to have a net zero loss of, of biodiversity because if you lose ecological functions in the living ecosystems, you lose uh, carbon sink capacities, you lose carbon stocks, you lose moisture feedback, you lose many of the ecosystem functions that, that we as humans depend on for our own livelihoods. So the planetary boundary uh, results already at the 2009 paper show that four of the nine boundaries were you know, transgressed. So this is climate, obviously, but also biodiversity, nitrogen and phosphorus, and, and land system change. And land system change is really dramatic because that's the boundary, you know, how much of intact forests are we able to keep in order to serve humanity and, and stability in the planet. Now, we know that by losing more forests, we also risk having impacts on the climate boundary. So, so the, the insight scientifically is that they're all interconnected. So if you go into the red on biodiversity, nitrogen and land, you're very likely to have feedbacks that makes it more difficult for us to meet the climate boundary. So it's like, all for one, one for all. It's, yeah. a, it's a three musketeers approach to the planet around. Now, it's not all bad news because I just heard you on stage, you're here at the New York Times Climate Hub in Glasgow, say that actually purely on a biological, physical sense, it's completely achievable for us to hit the 1.5 degree target to get within the planetary boundaries. The challenge is actually more social and economic. Well, I, I like your interpretation of completely feasible. <laughs> um, that sounds like it's, a, it's an easy ride. It is not an easy ride. Uh, what I said is really that it's, it's still, from, from a pure natural science perspective, still possible. Uh, if we can keep the resilience in our living biosphere intact on land and in the ocean, and if we can decarbonize according to what I call the carbon law, which is cut emissions by half every decade, reach a zero point in 30 years' time, then scientifically, uh, what we know today, it's still possible. The drama is that it 
doesn't look so probable given the the political situation in the world that we're not not bending the curves fast enough so you're right it's a one has to be clear that i i would conclude like this it's necessary to aim as close as possible to 1.5 it's still possible the window is still open but but barely is it probable do we do we see signs of leadership that would take us to that safe landing zone for the moment the answer is no and that's why we need to ramp up the the speed of that transition